and welcome to Data City Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Darren Hook, the Director of Data Governance and Management at American Express. Ready to share your knowledge and network with your data peers? Join us in San Diego this June for the Data Governance and Information Quality Conference. Five days packed full of new perspectives, new colleagues, and new approaches are yours when you register at dgiq2023west.dataversity.net. Lock in early bird savings when you register by May 5th. We'll see you there. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who are have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And today we are joined by Darren Hook, the Director of Data Governance and Management at American Express. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Darren, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, Glad to be on. Appreciate that. So you're the Director of Data Governance and Management at American Express. And, uh, you know, I have to ask, just in case somebody doesn't know what American Express is, what is American Express and what is it that you do? Yeah, so American Express is a global company. Uh, we mainly do credit cards, but we're, we're in a lot of financial services. Uh, we help uh, with travel, uh, loyalty points, um, really doing anything that helps support people uh, to achieve their uh, financial goals. Um, And what I do at American Express is um, being the the director of data governance, I'm actually uh, part of a particular business unit. Uh, So we have a federated uh, data governance model where we have an enterprise data governance and I'm in one of the business units that deals with merchants and network. And so I'm in the GMNS uh, uh, space or the global merchant and network uh, services team. So I have my own team there. We are um, you know, building up data governance uh, based off of the policies that enterprise data governance uh, puts together uh, and we're having fun doing it. Nice. I love it. So, so tell me, Darren, so when you were just very young in elementary school, you know, was this the dream? Like, I'm going to grow up to be a director. Of data governance <laughs> uh, no, was not exactly. No, uh, the, the dream, the dream was actually to become a baseball player. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, and I, I've loved baseball. Uh, and, and since, you know, looking back on it, uh, one of the great things about baseball is that there's a lot of statistics. There's a lot of numbers involved. I've, mm-hmm. I've always loved numbers. I've always loved, uh, you know, strategy and, um, you know, looking back on my childhood and, and how I loved playing games like, you know, Monopoly or Risk or, you know, things that, that had a strategy and, you know, you're moving towards uh, certain milestones and progressing um, to then, you know, complete uh, a, uh, you know, a, a goal um, with, via, you know, numbers and, um, you know, working with other people to uh, influence that, that strategy. Very nice. Uh, so then, okay, so your dream of baseball, so... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great. And it is such a, one of the, um, uh, what do I want to say? The sports with most data. I think of, of any of the sports, there's more mm-hmm. data tracking in baseball than any, than yeah. any other. Sport. So, so actually as a child, so I would, you know, look at the, the baseball players. I would write down, you know, their statistics. I would look at the newspaper every morning, you know, look at uh, the batting average leaders and, and things like that. Um, I, I've just always loved numbers and rankings uh, and, and even going into, you know, my, my high school years, you know, fantasy football. And I, I looked at it in a different way 
uh, I, I saw it as, you know, more of a portfolio of uh, assets and, you know, no, nobody else sees it that way or, or not many, I, I should say. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always loved, yeah, numbers and, and games and uh, that, that strategy part of it. Oh, very nice. So then, so, uh, so as you went through high school and, and then where did you go? How did you, uh, what did you study? Yeah. What did you, yeah, what were yeah your so first jobs? I, always being a, a numbers guy in in high school, I took uh, both statistics and calculus. You know, just wanted to take as much uh, math courses as uh, I could. Uh, going into uh, college, um, I I looked at, at a number of uh, different uh, majors. I, I looked at mathematics, obviously statistics. Uh, but I was also interested in business and, and seeing myself eventually getting an MBA. Um, I, I also liked the um, technical you know, side of things. Uh, in, in college for uh, about a year, I thought, oh, maybe I'll, I'll be an accountant. And, and I took some uh, account <laughs> uh, classes uh, until I was like, oh, this actually isn't really about numbers. It's more about the, the laws and uh, you know, the computers are, are doing the counting. Um, so I actually went into economics uh, as my uh, major because I really liked how it it formed uh, you know why people make the decisions that they do um, into that mathematical framework uh, that explained a lot uh, of you know benefits costs uh, for example uh, efficiencies I, I loved uh, again learning about that and and how I could apply that uh, to the business world. So then after I graduated with uh, my economics major, uh, later on, I did uh, go and get my MBA at uh, Purdue um, and, you know, concentrated in, in data analytics. Um, and, uh, you know, before that, I, I worked at Hewlett Packard for a number of years as well. Um, and, you know, there got into more of the, the data information systems you know, how relational databases work and, and kind of that technology standpoint. Um, and I still say this when I'm recruiting for people, I, I like people who like to bridge those gaps between the technology, the, the math, the business side of things um, and, and kind of dabble in, in all of those, uh, but, you know, working with people. Um, and and I, I really love working with people. When, when I started going to uh, my MBA classes, uh, then I thought, okay, this is an opportunity for me to be exposed to a lot of, you know, parts of the business. Uh, I know the value and importance of data. Um, and so therefore, I, I think I can, you know, become like a data scientist or something that that was kind of the goal. Uh, but as I went more into uh, that, as well as, uh, you know, I, I then transitioned into uh, well, kind of stumbled upon, uh, which I think a lot of us do, uh, a data governance role. I was like, I don't know what data governance is, but I want to get closer to the data. Uh, being a business analyst, going, you know, uh, wanting to to go into the data field, um, I learned about data governance and was like, actually, I want to do data governance more than be a data scientist uh, because of that aspect of bridging the gap, helping, um, you know knowing the the value of data um, and and then being able to bring people together uh, and and align on you know uh, how we can improve the value of our data um, and and uh, capture um, and and realize that value so uh, well I want to come back to the data governance aspect in a bit but uh, so you, you know, you worked at Hewlett Packard, you got your MBA, you know, how, what were those jobs and what were you doing that led into that data governance role? Yeah, yeah, uh, good question. So as I was graduating from college, then I was looking at, okay, should I become a business analyst or, or a financial analyst or, or something like that? I knew I wanted to, yeah, uh, get more into, you know, researching, you know, about the, the business and, and using data along with that. Um, so I, I became a business analyst, uh, again, for Hewlett Packard. Actually, I got introduced into the credit card space there. Uh, not many people knew, know that uh, Hewlett Packard does credit card uh, processing uh, for Australia and New Zealand, at least. Um, and as I, yeah, learned more 
uh, about that and, and knew that, you know, I, I was still, you know, a numbers guy and, and always have been, uh, then, you know, realizing that there's different opportunities in the data field, um, you know, that, that opened my eyes to, oh, okay, I could, you know, use some of my skills to then uh, be a part of that. And, and again, I said, I, I stumbled upon it because I, you know, was able to, to move closer to Purdue. So I moved from Ohio to Indiana. Uh, and as I did so, I was looking for jobs, uh, you know, just as a business analyst and, you know, or maybe a data analyst or, or something like that. And, and I saw that it was data governance analyst, didn't really know what that meant, but I said, hey, let's jump into it. Uh, and like I said, as, as I progressed through um, you know, that career uh, path and, and saying, oh, okay, what, what is data governance? Uh, the more and more I learned about it, the more I found uh, that I enjoyed that more than uh, I thought I was going to uh, enjoy a, a different field like uh, data science. Fascinating. You got into data governance pretty early, just just almost right away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was uh, definitely a, a blessing uh, to stumble upon it, if you will, uh, because as I, you know, then learned about data governance and the influence that that I could have. Uh, if you think back to like the data management book of knowledge, the the Dumbach wheel, you know, you have data governance in the center of it, and and I like to dabble in you know, a little bit of data architecture, a little bit of metadata management, a little bit of data quality, uh, a little bit of data security, um, and, and know, you know, all the things that are going together. And then back to that strategy piece, having a, a strategy for um, how you can improve really all of those aspects uh, through bringing people together, aligning on, uh, you know, whether it be business definitions or, um, having a central repository for metadata uh, or curating that data into, you know, a, a place where analytics can then, um, you know, bring forth the insights that businesses need today. I like it. So, you know, so it just sounds like a natural progression to move up into a director of data governance. It's just kind of been your career path. Yeah. Well, back to your point of, uh, you know, getting into data governance early, uh, it was kind of a blue ocean opportunity of uh, as I was getting my MBA and as I was getting experience at the same time, uh, then, you know, as I was uh, taking some of the, uh, the issues uh, that we were having and, and bringing them to resolution uh, and, and explaining and training, uh, you know, people in the organization, hey, this is what data governance is, this is what we can do uh, to help out. Um, it got more and more attention uh, to the point where, uh, you know, as I was graduating and, um, you know, my, there, there was a lot of transition, um, you know, at, at the company uh, that I was at at that time. Uh, and so my uh, boss uh, at the time, who was, you know, uh, pretty new uh, to having me and my team uh, under him, uh, he asked me, you know, so who's leading data governance? I mean, you are. And so uh, I was able to actually get a director role uh, pretty quickly uh, after that because I was already doing the things that uh, the director level, uh, you know, was, was expected to do. I was driving a lot of outcomes and deliverables and uh, things that, that were providing uh, a lot of that value. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. So let me ask you, Darren, I mean, since you have such a passion around data governance, uh, you know, we run into a lot of people here at Dataversity who are, who ask for help to uh, solicit uh, to um, their management on getting data governance implemented at all, because uh, mm -hmm. it, sometimes it seems like it's viewed as a dirty word. It's like they, people think it's all about l l the laws. Um, um, but tell me, so where, what, uh, how, what do you do in your role of, of data governance, and how is that helping American Express? And and 
um, what is the specific passions that you have that just fuel that? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that first of all, I'll say at different companies, data governance means different things, right? Uh, because it depends on the culture. Uh, it depends on really the, the struggles of, uh, you know, the, the company, the industry, et cetera. Uh, everybody needs data. We know that, but what are the specific struggles? Uh, is it that we're not being efficient? Is it that we're not uh, being able to, you know, put things out to market? Is it that there's confusion in reporting, uh, which was actually the, the case at that small uh, insurance company that I was working at? Um, you know, people were, were rolling up products in, in different ways and, and particularly in the financial services industry, you know, where you're not producing widgets and, and there isn't, you know, that uh, tangible uh, product, um, then it, it made sense that different silos within the organization uh, were defining things differently, which then led to discrepancies in uh, reporting, which then led to data brawls, if you will. <laughs> you, you go to a meeting and somebody has one number uh, that says everything's going great and somebody has a different number that says it's not going so great. Um, and then you start digging into, well, where did you get this information, the, the data lineage? Um, you know, what's the quality of this information? Well, we don't measure it. Uh, you know, what, what's your definition of <laughs> this product? Uh, and, and it was different. And so those meetings need to be more about, you know, the, the revenue and, uh, you know, the, the costs and, and being able to be more efficient and uh, drive forth, you know, profitability. Uh, you can't do that if you don't have data governance in place. And so uh, I, I found very early uh, in this, you know, career change, you know, kind of coming into data governance, uh, that there is a lot of opportunity out there because there is a lot of data. Uh, a lot of people are, are used to the olden days where you have one system, you know, one mainframe that, you know, crunches the numbers and spits out, you know, what is needed. But uh, nowadays, there's so many specializations uh, in uh, software uh, and, and, you know, being able to increase the, the quality uh, of your data, you know, you need to have APIs, you need to uh, have the integrations with uh, things that are going to give you that higher quality data. And so, therefore, if you have different systems saying different things, then you need to have that, that central source where uh, you can rely back to, uh, you know, what is the truth of, of what we're dealing with uh, so that we can then make the right decisions, uh, be more efficient, um, and, and be able to, uh, you know, gain that value from it. Very nice. So I like to ask this question, you know, what is your definition of data as a data practitioner? And uh, so let me just stop there and let me ask that <laughs> part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would consider data uh, anything that is a representation of what is truth. We, we were just talking about kind of that, that source of truth. So um, if you are receiving, a, and it can be numbers, it can be letters, it can be uh, images, it, it can be anything that uh, you are trying to uh, capture and, and have that representation of uh, a fact uh, of, of life. And, and generally, you know, being in the business and, and financial services, a lot of times that's, you know, tied to specific numbers, uh, specific addresses, uh, specific people, specific companies, you know, entities, um, and the relationships uh, of all of those things. Um, you know, is, is the raw data, having the metadata or that contextual information uh, that then allows that raw data to actually mean something, uh, that's when you start getting knowledge and, and the insights uh, and the things that uh, are, are really going to, um, you know, benefit a, a company. Very nice. So do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Oh, absolutely increasing. Um, you know, uh, for a number of years now, uh, people have been talking about analytics and, and data science. And, and again, that's what helped me, you know, to, to fuel me in, into the data governance space. But um, 
you know, as people talk about, you know, gaining these, these insights and analytics and, uh, you know, we, we can do it, you know, with just machines and, and we can automate everything and, and it'll be great. Um, we've found, you know, especially with machine learning, um, AI, you know, that, that what is being produced uh, when you don't have good data, you know, it's just garbage in, garbage out. Um, you, you have to understand the data. You have to be able to find that data. Um, and then, you know, as you do data governance, then you can have that trust uh, in the data uh, that it's actually representing uh, what you think it should uh, and that everybody's aligned on that representation uh, of, of the facts uh, that, that are needed. Very interesting. So, and, and what advice would you give people looking to get into a career in data management? So there's no degree necessarily in data governance. So, <laughs> so what should people study and, and what should people focus on? Yeah, I kind of mentioned this earlier that uh, when I'm recruiting, I try to find people who, uh, you know, aren't looking linearly, uh, you know, saying, hey, I wanna be an accountant, so I'm going to you know, get my degree uh, as an accountant. Uh, it's more those people who you know, have a couple majors or like you know, a couple minors you know, as, as they're coming out of school. Um, and, and generally it's in the business uh, you know, or, or some combination or at least interest in uh, the, the business area, uh, the technical area and, and the mathematical um, you know, uh, statistics, uh, you know, kind of area. So when, when you get like all three of those, uh, then that's, you know, pretty golden. Um, but yeah, I would say that the academic world is starting, I, I am starting to see more courses uh, and more programs uh, around data uh, because data is that important. Um, again, there's, there's a lot more, um, you know, hype, uh, well, not just hype, but um, a, a lot more excitement, uh, I would say, on the analytical uh, side of thing of, of how to tell the story uh, of data. But uh, in data management, where, you know, we focus on what is truth and, and you know, um, how to represent that, um, there's, there's a lot more understanding now, um, and there will continue to be uh, for the people who are saying, hey, let's do this, you know, because of analytics, and then they realize that it's not producing what they want, uh, they need to go back and realize, oh, they're actually paying their data scientists to do data governance work, <laughs> rather than just focus on the analytics uh, side of things. And so um, as that becomes more and more, um, you know, in increasingly uh, aware among uh, companies and, and organizations, uh, the more and more uh, data management is at the center uh, piece. And, and I'm definitely seeing that in, in my uh, career so far. It's fascinating. You know, I've heard a few times that, you know, just understanding the business is so critical to uh, a data management role. Um, mm -hmm. uh, do you have any thoughts around that you can, that you can expand on? Yeah, uh, from my experience, you know, again, going in as a business analyst, uh, I, I found, you know, opportunities to, you know, find uh, what was happening, uh, you know, as, as credit card processing was, uh, you know, going through its, its process. And really what that means is that there was, I was understanding the data flow of when, when you swipe a card, then, you know, there's a certain amount of information that needs to go through, uh, you know, authorization, submissions, uh, you know, et cetera. And so as uh, that data, um, you know, is, is going through uh, the process flow, I realized that, yeah, I'm a business analyst, but I'm, I'm really getting closer to and understanding data and the data flows and okay, you know, now I need to learn more, you know, about the, the technologies behind it, the um, integration, store procedures. Uh, we, we had user interface, uh, you know, and, and we had the back end of, uh, you know, SQL databases, relational, uh, et cetera. Now, you know, at American Express, where, where the technologies have, uh, you know, just uh, become more, more modern, uh, we're dealing with no SQL databases and, um, you know, big data and, and uh, all of that. And so 
uh, we, we have uh, machine learning as well with our, our data quality rules, for example. Um, and, and the technology side of it, you know, is, is also, uh, you know, very exciting to, to see where we've come from uh, just uh, even in the last uh, 10, 15 years. Um, so back to your question of, of uh, you know, being in data governance, I, I do get to understand more of the business, uh, whether it's uh, the data flows, uh, the business process flows, uh, and you know, we we bring people together, and uh, you know, part of it is assigning formally uh, that accountability of of who owns the data, right? And you you get to understand the process of okay, well, who you know today make certain decisions and you know who should that be and so you really are at the center of uh understanding the business uh and uh getting to uh find out where uh data governance can you know prioritize uh some of the the issues that the companies are going through uh in order to uh, again bring about the the most value at that time I like it. And is there any way that, what do you do to keep up like with the tech? Because tech is changing so rapidly. Yeah. Um, so so how do you keep up with the tech and, and everything that you need to, to function in your role? Yeah, uh, this is kind of a softball pitch to me for data diversity, right? Uh, you know, for... <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> but I, sure. No, I'm, yeah, uh, to be completely honest, uh, you know, staying uh, in touch with each of the webinars, uh, going to the data conferences, uh, DGIQ, EDW, um, you know, there, there's articles out there uh, making sure you, you get certified as a data management professional. Um, and, and then, you know, through demo days and, and understanding, you know, what the different uh, technologies and offerings there are out there, uh, you get to see really how far uh, we've come and, and also how far uh, we need to go uh, because there's, there's a lot of opportunity uh, out there. There's no technology or tool that is uh, the perfect optimal <laughs> solution right, yeah. uh, to implement uh, because it is that mixture of technology process and people uh, in order to make uh, data what it needs to be. I appreciate that. Anything else that you want to add in? Anything that you want to expand on or? or... Um, so one one thing that I'll also add uh, just to continue my uh, uh, the story of my career progression. So as I uh, then was working, uh, you know, after I graduated uh, with my MBA and and I became uh, director of of data governance, uh, then you know one thing I, I had in my mind was, you know, okay, well, this is how it works at a small company. You know, I really want to see if, if the same things that I'm doing are going to translate, you know, to a, a midsize and, and even a large enterprise. Because again, I started at Hewlett Packard, you know, 350,000, you know, plus people at the time. Um, and, and, and then going back to, uh, you know, we had about 500 employees, uh, I think about the time that I I left the uh, small insurance company. Uh, so then I went to a midsize, uh, you know, company uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in financial services and uh, was able to also be a part of laying that foundation in data governance. We already started, you know, seeing the value of that and, and that we could, you know, establish that foundation so we could do cooler things, you know, with our data and, and bring people uh, the data that they needed. Um, and then, you know, when this opportunity came up at American Express, uh, you know, I was super excited to come back into the credit card space. It's a really exciting industry, uh, but also to work with, you know, really great people, uh, really intelligent, uh, you know, bright people that um, I could then, uh, again, take the things that I had learned, you know, uh, through my career at that point, and then apply them here. And so um, it's, it's been, you know, a great process. Uh, again, I've been blessed, you know, through uh, my time to, I, I keep saying stumble upon data governance, but I feel like that's how, you know, most of us get in the space because uh, there isn't that, you know, uh, data governance uh, um, program, you know, out of uh, college or, or anything like that, or, you know, we're, 
we're very um, nascent, uh, you know, in that space right now uh, in the academic world. So um, yeah, I would just add that you know it's a great space to be. Um, you know, for those who are not uh, in it right now, uh, there are opportunities out there. Uh, you know, careers in data management are, are just going to continue to increase. And so um, I'd highly encourage anyone to, you know, take a look at that, reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, you know, and, and ask me any questions. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's been a blast. Perfect. Well, thank you, Darren. Well, I do have one more very important question. Who's your favorite baseball team? <laughs> uh, so that's a great question because I actually uh, moved a bit uh, around uh, in my my youth. So uh, Seattle Mariners uh, are yeah, good man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that 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 was my first and 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 truest uh, team. You know, back when Ken Griffey Jr. was there, uh, Edgar Martinez, Randy Johnson. Yeah. Alex yeah. Rodriguez, you know, what, what a team, uh, man, we should have won the championship way back in the day and can't believe it's Watch taken this play. long for us to get back, you know, yeah. into the playoffs, but, um, <laughs> no, uh, so Seattle Mariners, uh, you know, that's cause that's where I grew up. I, I did spend my high school years in, uh, Texas. And so I always say I, I followed Alex Rodriguez, you know, going into, I, I didn't end up going to New York, but, you know, at, at least from the <laughs> Mariners to the Rangers, um, you know, shout out to the the Texas Rangers. Then I went to Cleveland and, uh, you know, became a Cleveland Indians fan, uh, now the Guardians. Um, and so I, I love, you know, triple A ball, double A uh, ball, you know, just uh, taking my family out to uh, the ballpark. So um, yeah, yeah, spring, spring training uh, is happening right now. We're, we're actually about to go uh, this next week. So. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Well, Darren, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. So I really appreciate you taking the time today. And for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up in today in the latest podcast and the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Mm -hmm.